So, welcome back to my channel. I just want to say thank you very, very much to each and every single one of the over 10,000 people that are now subscribed to my channel. Massive, massive thanks to each and every one of you for not only subscribing, but the mad amount of comments. I can't always reply to everyone. Um, there is literally so many at times. Um, thanks for all the views that you give me as well. Thanks for the shares where you share them around other platforms. Really, really genuinely rate that and thank you very much. Um, before I get into um, my preview for the Leicester game, which is a 12 o'clock kickoff tomorrow, don't forget to stick a big thumbs up on the video and subscribe if you're new. The next milestone for me is 50,000. Don't want to go to this 20s and 30s. Yeah, that's fantastic. But I've set my next target of 50k. So let's see how quick it takes to get there. This has taken five months to get 10,000 subscribers. So thanks very much again. Um, I've seen a few stats uh, pop up about the Leicester game tomorrow. Arsenal have not conceded three goals in three consecutive games since 1967. Um, we've only kept two clean sheets in the last 16 months, which is 27 away games. And um, Brendan Rodgers has not lost back-to-back -back games at home since he was a Liverpool manager back in 2012 when he actually lost to us and Man United back-to-back. -back. But yeah, it's, um, it's going to be an interesting game. I mean, obviously, we've come off of the back of two embarrassing defeats against Palace and against Wolves. And credit to both of them teams. They had a game plan, they executed it, and we flopped. So both of them deserved the three points. We can't even dispute it. We can't argue it. We had one shot on target against Wolves. So how can we even argue that? But, I mean, this game tomorrow, um, obviously, I've watched Unai Emery's press conference. If you haven't seen my reaction to that, I did post that quite late last night. It was about midnight I got that video out. Absolute nightmares. But if you haven't seen that, go back and check that video out as well. I also listened to some of the stuff Brendan Rodgers has had to say this week as well. And he's actually um, said that he's actually openly admitted that he targeted Mesut Ozil in previous games when he's played against us, when he's managed um, teams against us. Which is quite interesting because Mesut Ozil and Lucas Torreira were not on the team coach that arrived in Leicester City earlier on today. Um, they were not there. They, they weren't on the coach. Whether they'll play or not, I'm not so sure. Because if you're not on the team coach, there's a reason for that. And I can't see either of them two starting. Why would they not be on the coach? Maybe with the Valencia game in mind, he's keeping Torreira fresh because we know he's been struggling a little bit recently with a, an injury he's been carrying. And let's be real, he has looked so off the pace in the last couple of games, other than the Napoli game, ironically. But, um, and as for Mesut Ozil, we know that he's an absolute liability at times in away games, as most of our players are, judging by that stat that I read out a minute ago. But for me, I think that you know, we need to go there and we need to show some, some metal and we need to show that we do want to get in this top four. We need to hush their crowd. I say this every week. We need to hush their crowd because as soon as we can see the goal away from home, that's it. It is game over. We are not coming back into that game and winning that game. And that ain't Arsenal Football Club, but that has been Arsenal Football Club for about three seasons now. Our away form has been dreadful for three seasons and we need to fix that pretty sharpish because... It's a miracle that we're even in a position where we can still get top four. Because, you know, at the end of the day, we've been shocking away from home this season. We're better than last season, but it still ain't good enough for Arsenal Football Club. I want better than that. And it's no coincidence that, you know, we're miles away from even being up at the top of the table with the likes of Man City and, and Liverpool. There's streets ahead of us, even Tottenham right now, if we're being realistic here. But... They lost today, they lost to West Ham, first loss in their new stadium, first goal conceded in their new stadium. So, you know, we've still got an outside chance of getting third place, but this game, we need to be on it. And the fact that Ozil and Torreira never, uh, never travelled, um, I'm not too fussed about it, but at the same time, does that mean Mohamed El Nenny is coming back in? Um, because if he is, then we all know what we're in for tomorrow. And I just hope that when the team's announced, that there is no meltdown and everyone's happy with the team and we can go and do something against them. You know, and you know, I just want to see a performance. If we lose, we lose. But I just want to see a performance because the last couple have been shocking and not good enough for this football club. And um, a friend of mine, Russ, um, I know Russ watches my videos, so big up Russ. I had a conversation with him the other day and um, he spoke to Lee Judges as well. We mentioned this on AFTV, so big up him as well. Um, but Russ mentioned this to me, and this, this made a, a real 
light bulb switch on in my head. When a team are in the championship and they get promotion, a lot of that squad gets sold. Are these players worried that they're going to have their cushy little lifestyles ripped apart if we get top four? Because the chances are, if we get top four, a lot more of them will be going if we don't get top four. So are they thinking, oh, we better not get top four because if we do, we're out the door? Because, you know, who knows? I'm not, I'm not trying to question their professionalism or anything like that. But what I am saying is we don't know what goes on in these players' heads. And the fact that we're a different animal at home than we are away is alarming. And it is so far apart. It's not even, it's, it's not even close. It's embarrassing away from home. So I don't know. I just thought I'd stick that out there. Leave it in the comment section down there. And let me know you, what you guys think of it. But um, yeah, let's get into the 1-11. to 11. Um, Obviously, with the fact that Torreira and Ozil weren't on the team coach today, um, I'm going with this 1-11. to 11. I'm going with Bernd Leno. Um, two massive mistakes the other night. I think we covered that in the review and the player rating is just not good enough. But I think I've seen enough from him this season to see that there's a player there, there's a goalkeeper there that could be a top-class goalkeeper. So I've got no problems with him starting. I don't want to check back in the team. I'm going to go with three centre-backs and I'm going to go with Socrates and Koscielny and Monreal. And let's hope that they put a better performance in than they have done recently. All three of them have not covered their self in glory in recent matches and they need to step up. I don't want to see none of this like diving in, none of this stupid free kicks and yellow cards because, let's be real, they have got some good players, Leicester. Not just Vardy, but Damari Gray is a good player as well. Um, so, listen, he can ping a free kick, he can run a mock against us like Zahar did the other day. So, let's just stay compact, let's stay tight and stay rigid. That's what I want to see from us. Um, I'm going to go with Maitland-Niles at right wing-back. Going to go with Kalazanak. Um, let's hope he's got his crossing boots on. He hasn't had them on since he's been here, pretty much. But let's hope he knows how to cross a ball tomorrow. Um, in the middle, like I said, Torreira didn't travel. So I'm going to put Joe Willock in. I don't want to see Mohamed El sideways and backwards in that team ever again. Um, next team, I'm going to go with Granit Xhaka. And let's hope Granit Xhaka doesn't pass Jamie Vardy clean through for a goal tomorrow like he did to the guy the other day. Let's hope it's a proper Granit Xhaka performance where he's not flustered, he doesn't do rash moves, and he's actually spraying balls about. Um, obviously, the three in front of that, this time I won't pick 12 players, by the way, like I did for my Wolves preview. Um, and like I said, we probably needed 12 to beat them, and that was proven. So I'm going to go with Aubameyang, Lacazette, and Alex Awobi. Um, again, all three of them didn't cover themselves in glory in the last couple of matches. Absolutely anonymous. I know Aubameyang scored against Crystal Palace, but I just felt that I didn't even know he was on the pitch. I genuinely did not know he was on the pitch until he, he took that guy on and scored the goal. Um, Lacazette was just rubbish, absolutely rubbish the other night against Wolves. So was Alex Awobi. But this is a chance to redeem themselves. This is a chance for them to go, yes, we do want to get top four. We do want to get Champions League football next season. So that's my 1-11. to um, Let me know what you guys think of it. Let me know whether... Um, you're worried that Ozil and Torreira weren't on the coach. Let me know what your 1-11s to would be. Would you go four at the back? Would you go five at the back with the wing-backs? Um, would you go with a Bamiyang, a Wobi and Lacazette up front as the three? Or would you put Mkhitaryan in? <laughs> I know, probably a trick question really. But how do I see the game going? Leicester are um, quite an intense team. They like to break quickly. They've got genuine raw pace with Damari Gray and Jamie Vardy. They are a good outfit. They know how to defend. Um, and the fact that they've won four out of their last six games in total, that's a better run than us right now because we've lost three out of the last four, is it? And we should have lost to Watford as well. Let's be real here. So they're in better form. They're at home. They've got the fans on their side. Um, we need to make sure that we silence all of that inside the opening stages of that game. If we can nick a goal, I don't want to see us bombing forward. Get a goal, go 1-0 up, sit back and manage the game out properly. I don't want to see none of this stupid bombing forward and leaving gaps. Because as soon as our, as soon as our midfielders bomb forward and our wing-backs bomb forward and don't track back, straight away we are isolated. And Jamie Vardy can make some of the best centre-backs in the world look stupid at times. We've seen that over the years. So let's make sure it's not the Vardy party tomorrow and let's make sure we defend properly and not like idiots and let's make sure that when we get our chance, and our chance is, if we create any, because we didn't against Wolves, let's make sure we stick them in the back of the net. I, with all that being said, am going to predict a victory. 
um, against all odds. I do think that we will somehow nick a win up there. I don't know how we're going to do it. I, I don't know who's going to score the goal, but I'm going with a 1-0 victory. I reckon we're going to keep a clean sheet. I genuinely believe we'll get a victory, a 1-0 victory. I will quite happily take a 97th minute dodgy own goal, 1-0 victory right now. I'll be over the moon with that. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your score predictions and your 1-11s. I'll try and do my best to reply to as many as I possibly can. Obviously, it is Saturday night, so bear with me. Um, don't take it um, personally if I don't respond to you. Like I said, the comments are mad, so I will do my best. And tomorrow, I will be doing a live watch-along on Guna Eagle Eye. So go subscribe to Chris's channel and uh, stick the notifications on for that as well. Until tomorrow, I'm out of here. Laters, peeps.